In 2016, I built my first $4,000 ultimate system build, the i7-6800K 6-core 12-thread Broadwell E beast of a computer. I did it for my 4K content creation here on YouTube. But that was 2016. Today, we have CPUs with far more performance. Is it worth upgrading? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. In front of me, I have a 16-core, 32-thread beast of a CPU. This is the Threadripper 2950X. It is more expensive than the Broadwell E was in 2016. It definitely is a step up in terms of cost, but with all of that performance, it may very well be worth it. One question I want to answer in today's video is, is a modern 16-core Threadripper three times the performance of a six core chip from just three years ago. It's not quite three times the cores. It would have to be 18 cores for that to be true, but it's close and it has a higher clock speed than the Broadwell E chip does. So that may well make up the difference. Before I take this apart, I'll be running some benchmarks on it and then we'll run some benchmarks after the upgrade. And I'll show those to you later in this video to see whether or not we got a three times performance increase. Building your content creation computer is only the first step. The next one is to learn how to effectively use it, and that brings us to Skillshare. Thank you very much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and providing two free months of premium service to the first 500 people to click the link down in the video description below. After that, it's less than $10 per month for unlimited access to thousands of classes on every topic under the sun, including things like how to edit with Premiere Pro, how to do Adobe After Effects, filmmaking, how to vlog, and so much more. I use this service, and if you want a deal in education, it's less than $10 a month. You have found it. Here's an example of a beginner class. There are multiple videos here totaling three hours and 22 minutes. There are class notes. You can read 609 reviews of this class to find out if it's worth your time to watch. This particular person who did this, he has more than 10 years of experience in video production. And for less than $10 a month, you can get access to his knowledge. You can see all of his various classes here, color correction, etc. In fairness, color correction is probably one I could use occasionally. But if you want access to professional courses, this is a deal. Remember to click my link down in the video description below for two free months of Skillshare Premium with access to all of these classes, and again, less than $10 a month after that. This upgrade today is going to cost about $1,100. The CPU is running around $800 at the moment. We'll be installing it on this ASRock Phantom Gaming 6 motherboard, about $250, and then we'll be putting it on this Cooler Master TR4 cooler right here, which is about $50, $60 or so. I do have a very nice cooler already in the system, but I will not be reusing it. That's a 280 millimeter liquid cooler from Corsair, but it does not fully cover the rectangle die of the TR4, of the Threadripper. It's a square uh, heat plate, so it doesn't fit. We're gonna take that out and replace that with a full coverage cooler. Everything else in the system stays, Except for the video card, which I'm swapping for different reasons. I'm going to be putting this uh, RX 590 from ASRock in there instead. But that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the CPU performance. So $1,100 buys us a new CPU, a new motherboard, and a new cooler. We'll be reusing the RAM, reusing the SSD, reusing the case, reusing the power supply. The video card is a separate swap. And for that $1,100, how much performance are we going to get? Let's find out. Before we get started tearing into this, linked in the video description below are going to be a lot of links. First of all, I will link the full playlist on this computer build. I did a bunch of videos back in 2016 on this. There's also a video down there, uh, Story Time with Tech, where I spent a long time talking about the history of it, what I did with it. My wife used it for a while. So the history of this is down there as well, if you want to watch that sort of long Story Time style video. I will also link down there these new parts to both Amazon and Newegg, the Threadripper, the motherboard, the video cards, the cooler, etc. I'm not going to link these old parts down there because, frankly, nobody in 2019 should be buying Broadwell E or anything similar to that. If you want a less expensive option than Threadripper, that's what Ryzen exists for. Ryzen's an amazing value for the money. But if you want a high-end desktop, 
If you want 64 PCI Express lanes, quad channel RAM, 128 gigs of RAM support, if you want well, actually up to 32 cores, 64 threads, this is the mid-level processor. They also make a $1,700 chip that has twice as many cores and threads, which most people shouldn't buy. This is what most uh, video editors and content creators should buy. That certainly is an option, or maybe more this summer when the third generation Ryzen and Threadripper come out. But for now, I'm going to put the camera overhead and I'm going to show you the upgrade in place process, which I've never done before on my channel. I'm going to take the motherboard, CPU, and cooler out of here, transition the RAM, SSD, and everything else over to this new motherboard. I'm going to install the CPU, install this cooler. We'll get everything set up, and then we're going to take a look at some benchmarks. Quick change of plans, the actual conversion of the old machine to the new is going to be in a separate video. I'd intended that to be five or 10 minutes long, but if you know me at all, you know I don't do five or 10 minutes. So that ended up being closer to 30 minutes. That's been cut and trimmed. As you can see here, the Threadripper is already installed. Instead, we're gonna skip that for the moment. And we're gonna jump straight to the benchmarks. Watch for a bonus video. It'll get linked down below once it's ready so that you can watch the actual conversion process if you wanna see the removal of the old components and the installation of the new. But for now, let's get to some benchmarks. The first benchmark is CPU-Z. This sums up the entire experience in one slide. The single-threaded performance difference is only 7.5%. The multi-threaded performance difference is 200%. It is 3x the multi-threaded performance, but a trivial difference in terms of single-threaded performance. Cinebench R20 was recently released, and it shows a much larger single core difference. Of course, it's a real workload as opposed to the synthetic CPU-Z. There is a 30% performance difference between the old i7-6800K and the new Threadripper. Multi-threaded performance, again, 200% faster, 3x. Cinebench is nice, but Blender is better. Blender is a real 3D animation program that you can do real 3D stuff with. The Blender benchmark takes 30 minutes and 3 seconds to run on the i7-6800K. It takes only 10 minutes and 10 seconds to run on Threadripper 2950X. If you had a job that was going to take, for example, 6 hours on the i7-6800K, it would take only 2 hours on the 2950X. 24 hours would shorten to eight, three days would shorten to one. If you're doing large complex jobs, Blender scales almost perfectly with cores and threads. 7-Zip is a free file compression and decompression utility, and this shows the limitations of endless cores and threads. The compressing is only twice as fast rather than three times as fast, but the decompressing is 3.5 times as fast, so it actually gets a huge speed boost. The combined ratio is not quite three times the speed, but needless to say, 7-Zip file compression and decompression really is faster on Threadripper. Handbrake is a free tool that allows you to transcode video into many different formats. This is a software transcode using H.264. It's a 4K 30 frame per second source file being transcoded to 1080p 30 frames per second. It is more than twice as fast on Threadripper, but it is not three times as fast. Passmark's CPU mark has a number of different tests. I split these into two slides to make them more readable. The overall score is only about 2x the performance when you can include all the various tests, but it depends upon what you're doing. Look at the integer math difference. That is a nearly 4x performance difference. That's crazy. But when you look at prime numbers in physics, it's only about double. So it depends upon what you're doing as to how much of an improvement it really is. Moving on to slide two, you can see the CPU single-threaded performance is hardly any different. The floating point math, encryption, and sorting numbers, however, are monstrously faster. You're looking at between 3 to 3.5x faster on those tests. The SSE is also faster. So why the overall pass mark score isn't better? Well, I assume that they're just weighting the CPU single-threaded performance tremendously high. And it is a fair point. If you're just doing basic tasks, 
thread rippers unnecessary, but if you can use those cores and threads, holy smokes, this thing is a beast. It is perfect for anyone who just needs all the CPU processing power you can get and who can utilize multi-threaded such content. Now I am going to do a build in a Threadripper 2990WX and we'll have to see how well it scales to 32 core 64 threads at some point. There you go. As you can see, depending upon your use case, this really is three times faster than the six core 12 thread Broadwell E. It absolutely demolishes it. In some cases, it's even more than three times faster, 3.5 and even 4X in one of those benchmarks. Single core performance is of course not dramatically improved, but that's true generally of most parts, except for some of the five gigahertz products that have recently come out but this is pretty typical of what you'll find short of five gigahertz. The Zen 2 cores are coming later in 2019 and Threadripper third generation will be coming along with them and I imagine we'll get another 10 or 15% performance out of that when it arrives. So if you're not building right now or you're watching this video six months from now, you may wanna consider taking a look at that. But for the moment, if you want a powerhouse of a computer and you wanna spend about $1,100 for motherboard, CPU and cooler, 2950X is it. One final note before we jump to the end here, and that is video card. The astute among you will take a look at this build and say, wait a minute, something is not right here. That does not look like an ASRock RX 590. You would be correct. I did the build with the RX 590, but then I ultimately swapped it out for an RTX 2080 Ti. Why? Well, because in terms of video encoding, video rendering, uh, content creation, transcoding, etc., an RTX 2080 Ti is a much more powerful video card than an RX 590. Depending upon your use case, you may not need something like this. An RTX 2060 or an RX 590 might legitimately be all that you need. But since I have one on the shelf, I put it in because it just makes it a beast. Thank you so much for watching this. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, that's what the comment section is for. Check the links in the video description. Links to the original build of the Broadwelding machine back in 2019. Links to all of the new parts down on Amazon and Newegg down below. If you like my content, you want to support the channel, use those links while shopping at no extra cost to you. They are affiliate links. They do support the channel. I'd be greatly appreciative. My social media links and other contact information is down there as well. Thank you so much for watching. I will see all of you next time.